talk about IV therapy skills. Um, the first thing I want to share with you is that you're always going to start with your eye power. The most important things you can do is always check your name band, your allergies, and then you're also going to want to check compatibility with your IV fluids um, if you're going to mix anything at any time. You also want to make sure that you check on your bag that you're going to infuse the expiration date, which will be in one of the corners at the top of the bag. You also want to make sure that your bag is intact and that it doesn't have any holes or um, places of contamination. The first thing I'm going to show you is how to spike and prime um, your tubing. I've already checked my bag against the MAR and the patient identification, and I've made sure that this um, solution will not uh, cause any problems with other solutions that are infusing into the patient. The next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to look at my bag. This is for gravity tubing, and when you look at this packaging, you're going to see that there's a drops per mil and that will be in blue in the upper right hand corner. I'm going to open my packaging and I'm going to dispose of my trash into the receptacle. And then one of the first things I want to do when I look at my tubing is I want to make sure there's not any kinks and then I want to clamp the tubing down so that when I spike the bag that no air will be infused into the line. There are two points of contamination possible on this tubing. This is the spiking end, so this has a cap and I want to make sure that cap stays on until I'm ready to spike. And then there's an end cap which has a little blue cap here you see and I'm going to loosen that cap slightly but still leave it on. So I have my bag hanging on the IV pole. This makes it easy for me so that I don't have to hold it. I'm going to hold this little port and I'm going to twist off the end so that I can spike the bag. Now as I hold this, I want to make sure that I'm not touching the bottom end. And I'm going to take off my cap. I'm going to hold the port and I'm going to Put the spike into the bag and twist gently and upward. Now you'll notice in my drip chamber here that there's no water coming in and that's because I already occluded the line. But if I want water in here now that I'm going to prime the tubing, I just pull gently on the chamber two or three times and now I see water in my line. Before we begin infusing um, the fluid down into the tubing, I want to just point out this infusion port on the left hand side. This is where medicated solutions might be added by a pharmacist. So this is not one that you will pull a tab off of. So don't use this one for your tubing. Now that I have fluid in my drip chamber, I'm going to make sure that there's no other kinks in my line. And now I'm going to open the clamp and I'm going to let the fluid run through the line and then I'm going to place the end into this bag. I did um, want to show you this because if you drip it into the trash, that's not best practice. The trash is considered contaminated. The inside of this bag is clean, and so that will be um, the best option for infusing your fluids. So I'm going to open my drip chamber now, and you're going to see that fluid will go through your line. I had another clamp clamped, but that's okay. I'm just going to make sure that it all goes through and that no air is left in the line. You might see some micro bubbles and that's okay because you can't get every micro bubble out of the line. That won't harm your patient, but anything that um, is large amounts, um, large bubbles, you definitely need to get out. And you can see that the fluid is flowing freely. And now that it is completely gone to the end, I can see dripping into my bag and I don't see any big bubbles in my line. I'm going to now clamp the tubing 
and I can take this out. And now my fluid is ready to go. Be sure that your tubing does not drag on the floor, especially this end, even if it's capped. If, if your tubing um, cap comes off and it touches the floor or is contaminated in some way, you're gonna need to start over and get new tubing. This cannot just be cleaned off. So the best practice is to leave this hanging up high on your pole until you're ready to use it for the patient. One thing you want to remember with gravity tubing is if your bag runs dry and you have air in your line, you're going to need to make sure you disconnect your tubing from the patient and reprime your tubing with a new bag of water or saline, whatever you're infusing. The reason why is because you will infuse a bolus of air into your patient and you can cause an air embolism. Next, I'm going to show you how to infuse IV fluids through a pump. This is special pump tubing, so I have to make sure that it's labeled, and it is Smart Sight Infusion Set, and that matches my pump here. We're using an Alaris. I already have checked my fluids, so I'm ready to spike and prime my bag. I'm going to open up my tubing. This particular tubing has this blue uh, cap on the tubing. I just remove that. And I can remove the paper that's attached. This is designed the same way. It has a spiking port, it has a drip chamber, but this tubing has a clamp um, where the infusion set will go into the pump. So this is just a very different piece to this tubing. And it also has a roller clamp if you need it. You can use this also to gravity if you need to in that setting. And then it also has the end cap, just the same as the other tubing that I showed you earlier. You can loosen this slightly so that when we put the fluid through the tubing, it can drain freely. This tubing is designed in much the same way. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to just put the roller clamp down before I'm ready to spike so that air does not infuse into my tubing. I'm going to go to my bag. I'm going to twist off the cap. I'm going to remove the cap of my spike. I'm going to hold my port and slowly twist and turn. I'm going to twist. And now I'm going to pull some fluid into my chamber. You want to make sure, once again, that you do not pull too much fluid in. You want to be able to see the drips coming through into the drip chamber. Now I'm going to take my end and I'm going to put that in my bag so that it has a safe place to drip that doesn't get all over the place. I'm going to open up my clamp and let the fluid flow, getting out all of the air bubbles. You don't want air bubbles in this drip chamber that's going to go into the pump. The reason why is it'll show air in line, air in line, and so you don't want that because it can be cumbersome trying to get the air bubbles out of this tubing. Now that we have our tubing primed, we're going to put this into the cassette on the Alaris pump. So I'm going to lift this chamber here, and you can see that there's this little spot to put this tubing in. So I'm going to place this cartridge in and press gently, and then the top has a little space where you can gently put in this cap. Make sure that the rim of that cap is above um, the plastic here. And now that everything looks straight and even, I'm going to slowly close this chamber. If, it, if it's too hard to close, don't force it. So you close it gently and push down. Now I'm ready to turn my pump on. So I'm going to hit system on and hold it down until it turns on. 
Mind you, I'm making sure that my tubing's not touching the ground, so I can place this up on here on the pole if I need to, to free up my hands. First it says new patient, so I'm gonna hit the button that says yes. Medical surgical, we'll say we're in medical surgical today, yes. And now it says patient ID. So you would wanna look at your patient armband and look for a patient ID number. I'm gonna put in the patient ID and press enter, or confirm, I'm sorry. Now I'm ready to set my infusion. So I'm gonna hit channel select A. There's three options, guardrail drugs, guardrails IV fluids, or basic infusion. Because this is an unmedicated solution, it's just 0.9 normal saline, I'm going to just hit basic infusion. Now I can put in my rate and my volume to be infused. My rate per my order is 100. And then I'm going to press enter. My volume to be infused is the amount that's in my bag or the amount that is ordered to be infused. So because this is a 500 milliliter bag, I would put in 500 milliliters. Oftentimes, you will see nurses put in 490 or 480 because if this bag goes dry, the air will start to infuse into this line and it will say air in line. And then you have to reprime your tubing so that you don't infuse air into the patient. So for this purpose, I don't want 500. I'm gonna put in 480 so that the alarm will go off before air is in the line and then I will press enter. Now that my pump is already set, I'm ready to infuse this into the patient. I've already checked my IV line, I've done my saline flush, and I've seen that the patient is ready to get an infusion. I've connected my line to the patient. And now I'm ready to press start so that my infusion can begin. And then it's green, you'll hear the fluid going through the line and you can see that my drip chamber is running and that's how I know that it's successfully running. One thing you need to know is that this pump does not tell us if the patient's IV is infiltrated. This will continue to run if it is going into tissue. So you need to make sure that you're often checking your patient's line, making sure that there is no bubbling or irritation or pain at the site because this will not tell you if it's running onto the ground, it won't tell you if it's disconnected, so just be cognizant that your assessments are still necessary.